This video is going to be about implementing the copy and clone interfaces. So let's say I've got a climate control system and I need some random test data for development. So let's go ahead and implement uh, a function that returns five random test values in an array. I already have a function that returns a single random test value. So I'll implement this the way I might do it in C++. Um, let's go ahead and return an array of five values. Um, I'll create a mutable array to hold the result and I'll then uh, for each member of the array go ahead and set that member to a random value. And this is fine because the uh, data is moved from the return of random into that value and then we go ahead and return the array. However, this doesn't really work in Rust because we need to initialize the um, contents of the array. Um, and we'll go ahead and do this by just setting a zero value to each member of the array. And in Rust, that's done by uh, giving it a template value. And in this case, we'll just use zeros. And we'll do it for five times the size of our array. And so now our array is initialized but there's still a problem uh, because Rust doesn't know how to copy our template value. So we need to implement the copy constraint, a trait. So the copy trait is just a marking trait. There's no actual function to implement. So we'll just use derive to add the copy trait. However, there's still a problem. Rust still doesn't know how to copy our data. So for that, we'll need to implement the clone trait. The clone trait will teach Rust how to uh, copy our data from one uh, into another struct. So it takes a reference to self and returns a type of self. And we'll go ahead and just uh, do a memorized copy of our data using new. Um, and that creates a new copy of our original struct. So now everything's fine we can go ahead and use our uh, random value generator. However, we can have Rust generate a clone for us when each we're doing a simple member-wise copy and each of those members itself is copyable and clonable. And we can remove our implementation and just go with Rust's implementation. All right, great, everything works fine, or everything compiles, so let's go ahead and use it. So we're going to create a function to print the values. And in this function, we're going to pass the value with ownership, not by passing a borrow. But it's fine because we're actually going to be passing a copy. So Rust will automatically copy the contents of the array into a new array. And we don't have to worry about borrowing the original array. OK, and we'll just print each value. And let's go into our main function and start creating some values. So we're going to create v1, which is going to hold a new set of random values. And then we'll populate v2 from v1. Now, normally in Rust, this would cause Rust to move v1 into v2, and v1 would no longer be usable. However, because we are copying the data, v1 is still usable. v2 has a whole new copy of the data. All right, great. Let's run this and we'll see that everything compiles and our data prints. Okay, thank you for watching. If you have any ideas for topics you'd like to see me cover, please leave those down in the comments. Uh, thanks again for watching, and if you'd like to be notified when I produce a new video, please subscribe. Thank you.